Hey guys, Manic Mercurian here with another birth chart reading. This one is for Friday, November 5th, 1993 at 11.25 a.m. in Oakland, California. And do you have Sun and Scorpio Moon in Cancer with Capricorn rising? And it's just funny because this chart almost could not be more different than the chart I just did a reading for right before this one. Um, okay, so the first thing I notice here is a strong water influence. You have Sun in Scorpio, which is water, Moon in Cancer, which is water. But not only that, you also you have this huge cluster of planets right here in Scorpio. So you've got your Midheaven, as well as Sun, Mercury, Pluto, and Mars, all in Scorpio. So unlike the last reading I just did, you would very much relate to your, your sun sign. So, you know, anything, if you just look up, you know, sun and Scorpio, you would very much exemplify those, those characteristics. So you, you would be very emotionally deep, um, very, very soulful, very sensitive, very perceptive. Um, you are very intuitive. Scorpio to me though, is it's this interesting combination of intuition and that emotional intelligence, emotional perception, but it's also analytical as well. Scorpio can be almost kind of surprisingly intellectual because it has that rational ability. It has that analytical ability and it comes from a sort of survival mentality. So Scorpio in the Northern hemisphere, Scorpio for us is mid, mid fall. You were born in the middle of fall. So in the Northern hemisphere, everything's sort of dying at that time in a way. And so Scorpios have this energy of like, they're trying to survive that, you know, they're starting their life at this time where everything else is dying. And so they're very counterculture, they're very different. They're almost kind of offbeat from everyone else. And they constantly feel like they have to measure, organize, adapt, uh, like they have to react to everything. Sometimes they feel like they have to control everything because they feel very deeply. They're very passionate. They, they have such strong emotions that they, they can feel ungrounded at times. They can feel out of control. And so different Scorpios will react to this differently. Some do become controlling or manipulative because they feel like they have to control their outside surroundings in order to control what they, what actually, they're truly what they're trying to do is control the feelings that they have inside, but they try to do that con by controlling their surroundings. <coughs> you may have that tendency. I don't see this as being strong for you though. And the main reason why is because you have moon and cancer. So, um, so I did a, a reading recently that had Sun and Cancer, Moon and Pisces. So that's a little bit similar here. You you have both Sun and Moon and Water signs. So you would actually feel more comfortable with the high level emo of emotion that you have. You would be a little bit more open with your feelings than perhaps the typical Scorpio. A lot of this is because of your Moon and Cancer. So, so Moon and Cancer is in domicile. Moon is the most at home in the sign of cancer. So this means that the emotional side of your personality is very emotional. You're very sure of yourself emotionally. Like, you know, um, like this, it could still be difficult having such emotions for sure, but you at least know how you feel at any given circumstance. You, you know your stance and you know your boundaries very well. You, I think you are very emotional and you can get lost in that emotion sometimes. You can feel ungrounded. But at the same time, you're very keenly aware of your boundaries, you know, especially with other people. You know exactly what you'll stand for and what you won't. Um, you know, it's that's a little bit black and white for you. Um, OK, but yeah, going back to Moon and Cancer, very emotional, very sensitive. And you'd be very empathetic. Moon is in the seventh house here. So you're very um, occupied by, by the well-being of others. And you're very good with other people. Um, part of this is because of the, all the water in your chart that people, especially very sensitive, emotional people, feel comfortable around you because they can place you emotionally. You're, you're very open and candid with that, that um, emotional side to your personality. Um, people just sense that you're genuine. Like, they, yeah. Uh, to me, you seem like a very sincere person. You also have Capricorn rising, which would add to this as well. So you're, you to me, you'd seem very sincere. Um, I think you would be sincere. You would be, um, um, how do I put this? People would know where they stand with you because you're very candid. Um, you, you know, again, you know exactly where you, where you where you are emotionally on any given circumstance, and so you you'd be sort of expressive of that in a way that is 
um, like to you, judging off your chart, I don't see you as being like a super chatty person or super like overwhelmingly talkative, but you'd be very concise in, in how you speak. You would get your point across with like few words, if you will. And part of this is just the combination of Scorpio, Capricorn, and Cancer, that those are the strongest signs for you. Also part of it, though, is you do have Mercury conjunct the Sun, and it's retrograde. So um, the way you think and, and speak is unusual. You have Mercury retrograde. So you, you see everything kind of backwards. It, it's almost like this would boost your intuitions. So you're very perceptive, very intuitive. But the way you go about this is very different from other people. So you're, this would make you an independent thinker, individual thinker. Um, you have your own process for coming up with things. And this would also mean that you, I think you would sometimes just kind of know things. You know, again, you're very intuitive, very perceptive. And so you may be one of those people where, you know, you come up, like, for instance, like a math problem, you come up with the answer, but you're not able to explain how you got it because to you, you kind of just make that leap. You just figure things out in a way that may be difficult to explain. It may be difficult to break down into multiple steps because you, I think a lot of your, a lot of things you just kind of know and it's almost inexplicable. Like you just, you just kind of know these things. Um, you're just very perceptive and intuitive like that. I'm not sure how to further emph emph emphasize that, but that's a theme that I see very strongly in your chart. Okay, what else? Um, Scorpio, let's see. And you have your Mars in Scorpio. So Mars is in domicile. This, to me, would indicate someone who you, you would not be one to pick fights with other people. You're not aggressive at all. You're very defensive, though. And if someone does um, cross you or cross someone that you're loyal to because you'd be extremely loyal, you, to me, you would have very, very strong connections with your close family and or friends. Um, you would have very, very strong ties. You are very loyal to other people, and you expect that loyalty in return as well. You would, you would desire that um, in other people. And so if someone does, um, if someone is being aggressive with you or someone close to you, you would not hesitate to rise up to confrontation there. You know, again, you don't seem to me like someone who would pick fights with other people, but if someone's picking a fight with you or someone you care about, you would absolutely step up to the plate to defend, you know, yourself or that person because you're very passionate and you're fiercely loyal. So I, I respect that in your chart. Um, let's see. And also, Mars and Scorpio is a great fighter, but again, it's it's a defensive fighter. It's It's very strategic and it's also very instinctive. So, you know... Again, going back to that situation of the confrontation, you would just instinctively respond, you know, within a heartbeat or, or a fraction of a second. You would be already, um, you know, fighting that person back and, and defending um, yourself or, or whoever you're defending. Um, let's see. It also mean that you are very passionate. I guess I've already said that, but... Uh, Mars and Scorpio can have a strong sex drive as well, but Scorpio likes to keep things kind of hidden, especially its strong feelings. So I guess your chart is this interesting combination of, I think you are very candid with things, but at the same time, you are very complex. You're very emotionally complex, especially. And Scorpio does kind of naturally keep things a little bit private or hidden. Um, so you, you'd have this interesting combination of being very candid, very uh, sincere, and, and even open with certain things. But at the same time, I think you're very private with certain things as well, especially emotional issues. Um, you know, and you can be both sincere and private at the same time. I think your chart would exemplify that. But I think you'd be very good with people, especially your, um, your reputation looks very strong here because you have all your planets all, I shouldn't say all of them. You have most of your planets clustered at the top of the sky here by your midheaven. Um, so like the sun, for instance, was almost at the top of the sky, you know, about as high as it gets when you're born. Uh, you also have Mars, Pluto, Mercury, Jupiter, and Venus all kind of clustered around your midheaven. So this would indicate that you're easy for people to understand in public, you know, at school or work, maybe online. Um, <clears throat> people, you, you would speak with conviction. You'd be very believable, 
very sincere and also very even authoritative. Um, people just kind of respect your authority. You have a lot of planets in Scorpio, so this is kind of naturally polarizing. So people, I think the moon in Cancer would soften this a little bit, but people would have very strong opinions about you. They would kind of love or hate you. I think in general, though, they would respect you at least. So they might not like you, but they would at least respect you because you come across in a way that is kind of firm. You're, I think there's this like gentleness, but also firmness in your chart where you are very sensitive, you are very empathetic, and you are naturally very oriented toward other people's thoughts and feelings. But at the same time, you don't sway in your boundaries and your standards, especially like moral standards. Um, and I think that comes across in the way you present yourself in public or, you know, in your reputation in general would have this sort of um, sensitivity and compassion, but also structure, you know, this kind of fixed aspect of it, you know. Um, yeah, and just kind of to go into that a little bit further, <clears throat> you are someone very sensitive. You, you like exploring kind of unusual people or topics, unusual information. Um, you're open to those to those things, but at the same time, you know exactly where your boundaries are. You know, um, and uh, and I think one of those again is is loyalty. You you would not tolerate uh, disrespect toward you know yourself or someone you care about. That's a very strong um, aspect in your chart. And again, I I respect that. Um, let's see what else here. Also, so we're talking about reputation so so you would people would definitely notice you you also have capricorn rising and this strengthens everything i'm talking about here so people you provide a structure in your reputation people um feel more secure i think when you're present because of that stability and structure that you bring that that is so nicely tempered with your emotional sensitivity as well um and this is kind of somewhat related to a theme I've noticed. So Midheaven and Scorpio, Midheaven is your career and your reputation. And being in Scorpio, it would indicate a certain level of intensity with your career. So you would naturally be drawn toward careers that might involve you seeing people on their worst days and maybe aiding in some kind of crisis. So this to me would be a placement for firefighters or paramedics, uh, you know, maybe people in healthcare to some extent or also counselors though, something where you're dealing with very intense situations and helping other people um, through some kind of transformation, if that makes sense. So I know that's a little bit vague, but uh, basically the bottom line is you would be able to handle and maybe even crave some level of intensity in your work environment. You would, you would be capable of handling that. Um, okay, <laughs> and what else can I say about your career? I think just looking at your chart in general, well, I pretty much covered it really. It's just the combination of being so empathetic, being so you know emotionally compassionate, but also very structured, very firm. Um, I mean, there's really a, a large number of careers that you could apply those that set of, of attributes to. Um, but I think there would be something kind of uh, very challenging about it. So helping other people through very challenging circumstances um, or, you know, very dire circumstances. I'm not sure exactly what that would be. It could be a lot of things. It could also be something like investigative. Um, you have so many placements in Scorpio and Scorpio loves to like figure things out. So you'd be very perceptive and anything that you don't understand, anything that's like a puzzle or a mystery, you would become fixated on it. You would just delve right into it and become like almost obsessed with it because you, I think you would enjoy that challenge of figuring something out, figuring out a person or figuring out a situation. Um, you would really, really enjoy that. So some, that could be it too, you know, something maybe intense or just something involving like having to figure out a person or a thing. So you might be someone who likes like, I don't know, like crime shows, investigative shows, or um, or or you might like doing that yourself. You know, Scorpio is the sign of like the investigator. It's the surgeon, um, the first responder, like the, like the firefighter, like I said, but it's also um, surgeon or you know, the investigator, the, the spy, for instance. Not necessarily, not necessarily saying you're gonna be a spy, but something where you can 
figure out problems, figure figure out complex or very challenging problems or, or react to those. Scorpio is very like centered around problems in a way. Um, you know, I talked about that earlier where you're constantly organizing and planning it and, re you know, figuring out your response. So, um, so you'd be very good at that and very good at not only strategizing for the future and planning long term, but you'd also be very good at responding instinctively, like very quickly <laughs> to situations. So something where you can kind of combine those, um, I think you could handle some level of intensity and almost crave it and really thrive in a career that, that requires those attributes of you. Um, okay, and Scorpio can also be a little bit pessimistic or paranoid, so you may... <laughs> I think it's, it's kind of funny because you have so much water in your chart and with the Cancer Moon, I think you have this sort of level of sweetness in your personality, especially with Venus in Libra conjunct Jupiter in a very prominent part, part of your chart. <coughs> I think you would have this kind of level of sweetness, like people sense that you're very kind and, and sweet and polite, but at the same time, it's just funny because you can you can really get into some dirty, you know, intense situations and really, um, you know, you can handle a lot of stress, I think. Um, you know, so of course everything requires temperance and moderation, but I, I do think you would thrive in some level of, uh, intensity. Okay. Um, what else here? Let's just talk about your relationship. So you have Venus and Libra, Mars and Scorpio, along with all your other planets in Scorpio, and then you have descendant and cancer. So let's talk about the ascendant, descendant axis first. Ascendant in Capricorn puts your descendant in Cancer. So this to me would indicate that you would be kind of in charge in your relationship. You would be the initiator, the leader. You would be the one that's the more responsible one. Um, so you may be the older one in the relationship, or you might just feel like you're older because you're more mature or you know maybe more wise or experienced in some way. And so you would be drawn to a partner who is, uh, I almost want to say kind of like a baby a little bit, or you know someone who's more, um, more, I mean, definitely the follower, they would follow your lead and you'd be the more structured one, the more responsible one, the one kind of figuring everything out and making sure everything's running smoothly. But what your partner would bring to the table would be a certain level of, um, intuition, but also emotional nurturing. So they would be like a baby in some circumstances, but they'd also be like a parent in other, in other circumstances. So they would be... Uh, they would require a lot of nurturing from you, but they would also be very nurturing to you in return. That would be ideal. So you, you want some level of closeness. You want, you know, you also have so much water in your chart. So I think you would really, really enjoy just melting into one person and you would be very monogamous, mon monogamously oriented. Like for you, it's all or nothing. Uh, you, you to me don't seem super, um, like you wouldn't really enjoy like flings with many different people you're very focused in general with everything you do. Very focused, uh, a little bit black or white, you know. And so in relationships, you'd very much want to partner with one person that's, you know, can be all or nothing with you. And I think you have a lot of high expectations. You know, they need to be very loyal and very sincere, very candid. Um, and uh, you would enjoy really, really getting to know that one person and figuring out everything about them and uh let's see what else here you would also like that familiarity uh you do have cancer moon so you like uh i was gonna say you like feeling comfortable but that's so vague what i mean is you would like things that are familiar to you you know cancer placements often like staying at home um and this is very different than all your scorpio placements i think most of your personality would desire like new information or new situations, but there's a part of you that is kind of a homebody as well. You, you like things that are familiar. And when, um, on the one hand, you do desire a certain level of intensity, you like figuring out new situations or new problems. But at the same time, I think if you are completely in a totally new environment for too long, it, I think it would be overwhelming to you because you also require some level of um, consistency and familiarity. Um, I know that's a little bit contradictory, but in a relationship, I think, you know, it's all about balance, I guess. And in a relationship, uh, you'd be drawn toward water placements. So 
Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. And this is really, really clear because you already have so many other placements in, in water, especially Scorpio. But then you've got your descendant in Cancer. So you would be especially attracted to Cancer or Scorpio placements. So maybe other Scorpio sons like yourself or, or just people with strong placements in Scorpio or Cancer. Also Pisces to some extent, but especially Scorpio and Cancer. I also uh, would recommend like Earth signs. So you don't have a lot of Earth in your chart. You are Capricorn rising, which is Earth. Um, you also have Neptune and Uranus in the first house Capricorn. Uh, but you have no planets in Taurus or Virgo. Um, so, er, so Earth energy is, you know, very stable, very consistent, very grounded. It's kind of heavy. Uh, but it's very practical, pragmatic, and it's kind of, it's a little bit predictable. You'd be attracted to this energy for multiple reasons. One is that you generally lack that element. So you can be kind of ungrounded at times. You can get swept away with your, your kind of intense emotions. I think you're very an, uh, you're a very intelligent person, very analytical. You can you can be very rational, but still you get you you do have a tendency to become ungrounded. I think, and so you would very much enjoy Earth signs. It would be an energy that is a little bit foreign to you, so that would make it sometimes hard for you to understand, but it would also make it more interesting because it's kind of exotic or it's something different than yourself, and. Earth signs are very grounded, very predictable. So they'd be, to be totally honest, they'd be a little bit easy for you to figure out. But I think you might enjoy that because you yourself can feel so emotionally intense and they would be, you know, like a rock. They would be, they'd provide structure. They'd be calming to you because they're consistent. They're pretty easy to figure out, I think, for you. And, um, and, uh, yeah, they would just kind of temper some of the potential I see in you to have to become um, ungrounded or experience these. Uh, like you experience such a, a vast array of emotional depths. So um, you know, you it's like it's like you experience more shades of emotions than most people do, and you experience them more intensely. So having someone who's earthy, it you know. It could be difficult just because it'd be hard for you to understand each other since you'd be so different in some ways. Uh, it's almost, I guess it'd be kind of like yin and yang. They would sort of compliment you very well. And you would compliment them because you would be more um, emotionally nurturing, but they would be more stabilizing. Um, so I think going back to the compatibility, I, th I think you'd be very attracted to definitely water. You need someone else who's watery like yourself. So someone emotionally, emotionally deep, compassionate, sensitive, intuitive. This would be very important to you and a partner. Uh, someone nurturing. So, someone who's not afraid to get a little bit sappy at times. You you would be um, a little bit sappy at times, I think, or you know, you wouldn't mind that, that um, emotion, the displays of affection and emotion. I think you would enjoy that. Cancer placements, especially Cancer Moon, uh, they're like cuddler placements. You would like that closeness and that um, sensitivity, that softness, especially in a partner, you know. So, um, like, you to me look like a hugger. You seem like a person who would hug other people. I don't know. Especially those that are close to you. I think you might be very suspicious or skeptical of people that you don't know very well because, again, you can be a little bit cynical or pessimistic. Um, you have a healthy skepticism, I guess I could say. Because you're also very sensitive and you want to protect that sensitivity in yourself and people that are close to you. So I think you might be a little bit guarded in those areas. But once someone is, you know, cool with you and you've sort of analyzed them and, and deemed that they're not a threat to you, I guess, uh, then I think you'd be a very warm and, and openly emotional person. You'd be a, a hugger to some extent. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's jump to your Mercury here. So actually... I'm getting distracted. I was talking about your relationship. So Mars and Scorpio, um, in a man, that you, you would be attracted toward watery men. Um, I mean, your your chart is so overwhelmingly watery, so the water sign part would be the most important thing. Um, you know, emotionally deep, sensitive, intuitive, creative. You're probably very creative, maybe artistic. Um you know, you're very passionate, so you could be into music. I think cancer placements in general um, are really good singers. I associate cancer with singing. So you may be a good, very good singer or just good at um, something something where you can express yourself creatively or artistically, and you'd be drawn toward that same theme in a partner as well. 
you do have Venus and Libra, so this would be a little bit more detached. Uh, this is very different than most of what, what else is in your chart here. Um, so, um, let's see, see, that could almost be a little bit flirty. Uh, I think people might see you as being flirty, but again, really to you, the m you do take these things very seriously though. Um, you take your connection seriously and, and intimacy very seriously and are very selective. But at the same time, you can be a little bit flirty just on the surface, I think, because you have this sort of grace to you or this um, aesthetic or this, like this would indicate that you're, you're probably very well dressed, especially combining this with your Scorpio placements. I think you would, your appearance would be very important to you. You want to, the way you come across is very important to you. So not only your, your, your physical appearance, the way you dress or like, um, you know, anything else that's part of your appearance, but, uh, but also your manners. And I think you're very, I don't know if strategic is the right word, but you're very, um, uh, deliberate in the way you project yourself or, you know, the way you appear toward other people. Um, let's see here. And your Venus is in domicile as well, so that, that would make you um, attractive, so maybe physically attractive, but it also just means you have an attractive demeanor. You do have a lot of Scorpio placements that would make things kind of divisive, so people would kind of love or hate you, but you also have this um, Venus in Libra that would m be a more uh, universally pleasant, I guess I could say, part of your personality. So. So people would find you attractive. You're, you're easy to be around. There's, um, I don't know. There's just a certain aesthetic about you that is desirable toward other, for other people. Um, let's see. And you have Capricorn rising, so I think you can be very like blunt as well. So <laughs> there's this interesting mix that I'm trying to articulate where you are very desirable and attractive and even like flirtatious at times, but you're also very blunt and uh, very, I guess, sincere, like I was saying earlier. So, um, so yeah, that's an interesting mix. I think people might desire that as well, that you can be so black and white, that you make things so clear um, and that you're not afraid to, to be sincere or to be, um, I'm looking for a better word than sincere, but that's the best I can come up with, that you, you're so, like, earnest, or it doesn't mean that you sp sp spell everything out for everyone. You don't, I don't see you as, like, you can definitely hold a secret, for instance. Um, you're very private with certain things, but you're, you're definitely not one to just, uh, like, you're very sincere, but you're not one to just spill the beans on everything and just, you know, you're very um, deliberate and strategic with the information that you provide, you know. So you, you, it's like you maintain this aura of openness and honesty, and in many ways you are honest and open, but at the same time you're very protective over certain information or certain you know emotional matters, etc. Um, okay, and whoops, let's talk about. Okay, there's a couple very different parts of your chart which I haven't gotten to yet. One is your south node in Gemini, north node in Sagittarius, and then one is your Saturn in Aquarius. So, okay, so south node in Gemini, especially combining this with all your Scorpio placements and your seventh house of Cancer moon, this to me would indicate someone who, especially, um, this to me would indicate someone who is very good at camouflaging with other people. You understand other people very well. You're good at figuring people out. You know what they want. So you can come across exactly how you know other people want you to. So in other words, you know how to be desirable to people. You know how to fit in. You're an excellent chameleon, or you can camouflage yourself. You can blend in. You can be what, it, what people want. You're good at all these things, but this would lead to your downfall because you're meant to go in a different direction. And it doesn't mean that you have to abandon those abilities that you have in those areas. <clears throat> those are excellent strengths. It's just that if they need to be tempered with your North Node and Sagittarius, which would indicate, um, you know, applying the passion. You are a very passionate person. So, you know, it's seeking truth, I guess. You're a truth seeker. And with your North Node and Sagittarius, 
it's not afraid to be more um, more radical, more rebellious, more um, standing out from the crowd or, you know, covering these maybe unpleasant truths, truths that people might not want to hear, but truths that are necessary for, um, for freedom or for ultimate understanding of reality. <laughs> um, so there, so you're going from this, this, uh, more scattered, shallow energy at a younger age. And then as you mature, you'll, you'll learn to incorporate more, um, applying passion or applying um, especially being very very genuine and I don't think this will be too hard for you since you have all these Scorpio placements but being more fixed or more passionate in your approach um, you know not I guess uh, restraining from the desire to to conform restraining from the desire to conform that's exactly what it is so at a younger age you want to conform you know you you might just want to like fit in with other, other people and you're good at it <laughs> um but as you mature you restrain that from that desire to conform and become much more solid in the truths that you've uncovered and the things that you are passionate about hopefully that makes sense uh, this is also related to this challenge that you have initially with other people. Um, I think it could be hard for you to have... I don't want to contradict myself too much. I said earlier that you do have these boundaries that are very strong for you, that you know your boundaries very well. That's true. But at the same time, I think it can be difficult to maintain those boundaries with other people. Um you know, especially at a young age, you don't really know where you fit in with people. You don't, it's hard for you to find a tribe or a community or a group. You don't know your role in society or you don't know exactly your role with other people. Um, you know, you have Saturn and Aquarius, so this, it's common to have either social anxiety, social awkwardness, or, or just not really knowing where you fit with people, not knowing your role. But this is something that you will rise to the challenge of, typically speaking, and especially around the age, um, actually right now, around the age of 28, 29, 30. You're most likely making a lot of progress in this area right now as we speak. You are learning your role, learning to, um, to bring your unique gifts to the table. With this placement early on, it's tempting to think it's tempting to to dwell on the differences between yourself and other people so this may f make you feel like a freak or it might it might be confusing because you feel so different from other people and then it's tempting to say well i'm so different from other people so i, I must be either better than everyone else or worse than everyone else but really neither are true and the lesson here is to learn that you are of course unique everyone is unique everyone is the same but also different and the way you can work with other people is not to hide away your eccentricities or you, your uniqueness. But in actuality, the best way is to bring that uniqueness to the table because that's, that's what people would most value in you. You have these unique gifts that they don't have. And so ultimately, that's the lesson with these Aquarius placements that, um, or you know, especially Saturn and Aquarius, that uh, for a society to work the best everyone actually needs to flaunt their uniqueness and their eccentricities because together, you know, we all contain a little different piece of the puzzle. And so if we're all thriving in our own uniqueness, we can all bring that to the table and benefit each other the most. So that's something that's true for everyone, but this is especially an especially relevant theme in your life. And again, it's something that you'll make a lot of progress on around age 28, 29, 30, and eventually you'll become I say you'll become, you of course have free will, but eventually you are very likely to become a leader in these areas. And this is great because this um, totally fits in with, you know, you have such a strong reputation. Uh, and so I think this works really well that it might be very difficult to know where you fit in early on in life, but especially getting into your 30s and beyond, 
you would become a leader. You would become very good at at organizing groups or leading a group, maybe being a teacher of some sort or a role model, an authority figure. Um, and this is the exact thing that you would have the most challenge with early on. Uh, you might not like groups of people early on, but this is something you'd be excellent with later on in life. <coughs> okay, and you have Saturn, or excuse me, you have Uranus and Neptune in they're conjunct in the first house. And so this would aid in your appearance being more unusual. So to other people, you'd be unusual. You, your uniqueness would be very obvious. Um, I think you would, would enjoy strange topics or unusual things, you know, where other people might feel uncomfortable with something that's too out there, too weird. You would just go straight into it because you're already attracted to mysteries or unexplained phenomena and such. Um, but also having your ass and Neptune in the first house, you you would really crave that un unusualness that at those um, more eccentric areas of life or the unexplained thing, parts of life. And you would exemplify that as well. So not only would you be attracted toward topics of, of that nature, but you yourself would embody that as well, that you yourself are kind of a mystery to people. You're an unexplained phenomenon, if you will. Um, what else here? <laughs> And but but and and this too would be uh, some people may be turned off by it because it's just too strange or different. But other people would be fascinated. I think people would find you very interesting. Let's jump around here. So let's go to your IC in Taurus. This indicates a potential for your upbringing to be materialistic, materialistically wealthy, but lacking in emotional support so this isn't always the case but it just indicates the potential for um for yeah sort of an emotionally deprived upbringing but you know you had everything you needed materialistically with wealth but maybe not so much emotionally that's kind of the challenge there um but interestingly enough i think both of your parents your chart would indicate both of your parents were very emotional, very sensitive, and that they were similar to one another. They may have gotten along to some extent. And I'm just saying this because your sun and moon are trining. Um, 25, actually. Yes. Not by degree, but by sign. Um, and your sun is in a very prominent position, and your Saturn is direct. So this would indicate your father was a very prominent part of your upbringing, maybe more so than your mother. I think your mother might have, well, actually, it's kind of confusing with your mother because, so the moon is in Cancer, so it's a strong placement, but then it's in the seventh house, so it doesn't relate to the ascendant. So this would indicate that your your mother maybe was a very present part of your upbringing, but at the same time, she may have a hard time understanding you sometimes. She may have expected something different from you or just um, not may not always be on the same page with you. Your parents wanted you to be structured. They wanted to, um, they wanted you to be disciplined and, and structured. They wanted you to uh, be kind of a leader. Be you know it's kind of conservative in a way, or um, you know they wanted you to. They're more traditional with you. They wanted you to be more. Um, uh, I think you get what I'm trying to say. They wanted you to be more like respectable and kind of like an almost old fashioned or, or um, uh, old fashioned type of way, I guess, conservative type of way. I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I think in some cases you fit that, but not always, like you you, you can be uh, very structured um, and have that, maybe that's where you get your, your strong kind of authoritative stance. Uh, but you're also very emotional, very sensitive. Um, so that, I mean, you kind of fit that mold, but not completely. I think the main difference that you would have from what was expected of you growing up is that you, you're you so open and you're such a, an, an individual thinker and you aren't afraid to go into these more strange realms of, of existence, of thought or, or emotion. And so, um, so that would be a little bit different. And that's where I think especially your mom would have a hard time understanding that at times. Um, but I think you would generally fit what your parents expected, which is that uh, kind of strong, mature, responsible, authoritative, um, that stance. So you, you can, you know, fit that.
Uh, okay, I'm just going to wrap this up by saying you do have Lilith and Taurus, which would indicate you being very sensual, <laughs> very sensual with other people, um, you know, especially like intimately. Um, your Lilith is also conjunct your IC, which is a very strange placement. So that would indicate almost like a matter of crisis in your upbringing. Um, it's hard to say exactly crisis or it would be, it's kind of a dark placement and it would be, it would mean that your upbringing was kind of dark at times or, um, I know that's vague. I'm trying to be more specific here. It could have had like a sexual connotation or, um, I'm having trouble reading that. Lilith is very strange. So, so Lilith, um, represents kind of like the untamed side of our personalities and it's especially feminine. It's like the, um, the rebellious, the, f the feminine rebellious side of our, all of our personalities, if that makes sense. Um, so it can be very sexual. It's like a, you know, uh, it can be rebellious through its provocativeness or its sexuality. Uh, but it's more than just sexual. It's having to do with, you know, autonomy and sovereignty and um, rebelling. But it also has this kind of dark connotation, this crisis connotation, I think. Um, so hopefully that's enough to understand, you know, you have all of that energy that I just described um, influencing your, your childhood or your upbringing. So maybe you'll understand that more than I am right now, but there is some kind of darkness or crisis or um, something to do with, I don't know, you feeling like you had to rebel or, um, I'm sorry, I wish I could interpret that better, but I, I that's the best I can do with that particular placement. Um, but that's generally what I see. So generally I see someone who is very sweet, very kind, very empathetic, very caring of others, fiercely loyal. Um, someone who's not afraid to, you know, get into some kind of crisis or some kind of challenging situation in, in order to help someone else or, or to be of service, I think. Um, someone who has a strong public image, strong reputation. And very psychological as well, good at figuring people out. That's generally what I see. If you have any questions or anything you'd like me to talk about further, I'd be happy to continue our dialogue. And for anyone else watching this, um, if you'd like a reading, email me at manic.mercurian at gmail.com. But um, thanks for this request, very interesting chart. And for everyone else, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.